You know, during colonialism, even slavery, when Europeans came and do what they did, all the negative things they did to the people in the world, uh, most of the time when a slave or, you know, an African would disobey orders, they would really beat him up, okay? They would beat him up really bad. Then with time, I think they got tired of beating up Africans. You know what they started doing? They would use another African to do the job. Yeah, or another slave. Another slave whose job is to beat other slaves up. And that's his job. He's going to use all his power because unfortunately some of these slaves wanted to be lacked by the boss, lacked by the master. And in order to be lacked by the master, what do you do? You do a thorough job. You make sure you do it in the most horrendous way possible so that the master can really trust you and really like you. And you can gain levels of trust at the level of the master. A judge from Uganda stationed at the ICG, International Court of Justice, has voted against all provision of South Africa, asking Israel to respect the people of Gaza. A Ugandan judge named Julia Sibutinde, uh, working for the United Nations at the International Court of Justice, has ruled against all demand of South Africa, asking Israel to conduct itself in a way that's humane toward Gaza people. Isn't that crazy? You know, I remember many years ago, I would go to an embassy um, looking for a visa to Europe. And I remember at one time, I met one lady that I'd seen in the past. She looked just like me. Okay? She came from my country of birth. And we could quickly pick that we are people from the same country. And this was a Belgian embassy. I, don't know, I remember I was looking for a visa to go to Belgium. And she made my demand very difficult. I had been to Europe many times. I had been to America many times. Let me just remind you that many Africans have issues getting visas to Europe. Okay, They don't give it to Africans easily because for some reason they think we're not worth it. Or when you go to Europe, we don't come back to Africa. So they've made it very difficult for Africans to get visas. And unfortunately for me, when I went to this embassy and so you know, seeing this lady from my country, I was like, she's working for the Belgian embassy. Surely she'll make it easy for me. I had all the papers. I had all the documents. I was legal. I was okay. So I had everything that's required for me to get a visa. But she made it extremely difficult for me. Asking me questions like, where are you going to stay? How long are you going? When are you returning? What's your uh, bank statement? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for yourself. I need you to be a wound. So you don't know you will give me your bank statement before? You want me to ask you first? I wasn't sure which to bring, personal or corporate. So I just brought both. If you were sure, I would have been surprised. I'm turning. Where is your proof of work? Where, it was December when everybody goes home, everybody travels. You know, so the offices are closed and she's asking me to bring a, a document that's original, uh, certifying that I'm a professional boxer. Now, dude, you know that I'm a, you know me. I mean, this is the document I have here. It's a copy. I can't get the original. She made it extremely difficult. I remember the um, ambassador, it was in the weekend. The ambassador said, can, can, can we see this person's passport? They opened my passport. So many visas inside. And he said, why do you make him wait? This man is a bona fide. Why do you make me wait? I mean, I need to go home. Give him his visa. Why are you scrutinizing? You can see he's been there and he's been back. I was extremely disappointed because this is a lesson we've learned all. When people of Africa, most of the time, work for their oppressors, let me put it that way, they become very evil, very difficult toward their own people as compared to the oppressor, so-called. I'm sure many people can relate to this story. They make it extremely difficult for you. And this is exactly, I believe, what we're talking about here. Is, how is this different? Julia Sibu Tinde, a woman of Uganda, she's a judge in the International Court of Law. And these are the provisions, and I want to explain to you very quickly so we can get to the point. There were 17 judges. South Africa went to the court, for context, to the International Court accusing Israel of mistreating Palestinians in Gaza. They said Israel used extreme force against the people that are not able to defend themselves, preventing them from having food, preventing them from rest, preventing them from being okay. And that is unacceptable because these people cannot defend themselves. And this was the plight of South Africa for the International Court of Law to ask Israel to stop, to cease fire, 
to allow the people of Gaza to have drinking water, to have food, to have medicine, to have a little bit of peace. And this woman, Judge Julia Sibutinde, has voted against all plight. Let's go through it. The United Nations top court ordered Israel on Friday to do all it can to prevent death, destruction, and any fact of genocide in its military offense in Gaza. South Africa alleged that Israel campaign in Gaza amounted to genocide. In the case, it had asked the court to order Israel to act all operations. In the anticipated decision made by the panel of 17 judges, there were 17 judges, 17 judges, the International Court of Justice ordered six so-called provisional measures to protect Palestinians in Gaza. Those measures were approved by an overwhelming majority of the judges. An Israeli judge voted in favor of two of the six provisions. But the Ugandan judge, Julia Sibutindi, was the only judge who voted against all of them. So, among 17 judges, fellas, who were dealing with the case of South Africa against Israel, where South Africa accused Israel of doing genocide against Gaza, and asking the International Court of Law to ask Israel to slow down, to not do what they're doing. Within that group of judges, there were 17 of them. 17 judges. Among the 17 judges, there was one Israeli judge and one South African judge. 15 judges have voted for Israel to stop what it's doing. And there were six provisions. And out of six provisions, two were accepted by the Israeli judge. But those two were refused by the Ugandan judge. So the Israeli judge was like, okay, we can stop doing A, we can stop doing B. But the Ugandan judge said, no, you must continue doing that. Let's read a little bit here and see what, what they say. So here are some of the measures and how the judges voted. This is what they say. They say, they say the state of Israel shall ensure with immediate effect that its military does not commit any act of genocide. You hear that? The state of Israel shall ensure that its military does not commit any act of genocide. Sibutinde from Uganda voted against that. So in other words, Israel should continue to commit acts of genocide, if they are committing. Number two, the state of Israel shall take all measures within its power to prevent and punish the direct and public incitement to commit genocide in relation to the members of the Palestinian group in Gaza. Meaning the state of Israel shall punish whoever comes up with ideas of committing genocide. Sibutinde from Uganda voted against that. So the state of Israel should not prevent any act of genocide if it's up, they should not do anything about it. Number three. The state of Israel shall take immediate and effective measures to enable the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance to address the advanced conditions of life faced by Palestinians in Gaza Strip. So in other words, the state of Israel should allow foods to come to Gaza, allow water to come to Gaza, allow people to breathe. And Sibutinde from Uganda, guess what? She was the only one who voted against 16 judges. So even the judge from Israel said, okay, we can let the food come in. But Sibutinde from Uganda said, no, don't let the Palestinian people of Gaza get food. Isn't this disappointing, fellas? Now, the Ugandan government has reacted to this. The ambassador of Uganda to the United Nations also expressed a different opinion. He says Sibutinde ruling at the International Court of Justice does not represent the government of Uganda's position on this situation in Palestine. He said on Twitter, Uganda has distanced itself from Julia Sibutinde. Julia Sibutinde's ruling at court does not represent the government of Uganda position in the situation of Palestine. Uganda's support for the plight of the Palestinian people has been expressed throughout our voting pattern in the United Nations. So even our own people have disowned her. So this lady who studied in Uganda, then later on went to study in Scotland, and she became a judge, and then later on was gifted a doctorate diploma from this uh, honorary doctorate diploma from a university in Scotland. She is the first African woman to sit on the international court. At the age 36, she went to Scotland where she earned a master's degree of law with distinction. And in 2029, the same university honored her with the doctorate of law, recognizing her contribution to legal and judicial services. And in the past, she worked in prominent cases against Charles Taylors of Sierra Leone and Liberia. So she's got a track record. And many people are trying to understand, how do you explain that? A lady from Uganda, where South African government is... Coming forward with a plight for the people of Palestine, for the people of Gaza, asking Israel to allow them to have a breather, to allow them to have some food. And this woman from Uganda says no to everything, while all the judges in the world, including the Israeli judge, 
say that, okay, we can allow them to have food. Okay, we can vote so that no genocide is happening in, among these people. She still vote no. And she say what's happening between Israel and Palestine has nothing to do with legal issues. It is indeed political and historical problems that cannot be resolved in a court of law. So, in other words, because history tells you stories in a Bible and other things, so you should let all that be resolved in a Bible. It has nothing to do with the court. That is the sense of Sibutunde Julia. Sometimes people do things to please people. I mean, it's an evident case. If that wasn't the case, then there shouldn't be a case where an Israeli judge vote for letting water and food come into Palestine while a Ugandan lady says no. Because at the end of the day, if you really are protecting Israel, then you shouldn't be able to protect Israel more than Israel protect itself. So if an Israeli judge can say, okay, let's give them food, and you say, no, don't give them food, because it's an historical, so biblical issue, then I think we have a serious issue. So the Ugandan government has distanced itself from this lady, saying, you know, she actually even voted against Uganda in some situations, some issues in the past. So she is in her own rodeo. She is doing her own thing. My question is this, fellas. Does this have anything to do with what we said earlier? When an, an oppressed person wants to please the masters, sometimes they go overboard. They will do beyond the necessary just to be perceived in a good light. Is this the case of that? Or does this have absolutely nothing to do with that? Because let me remind you, Europeans and other people are always beyond each other. Most of the time, they always back one another. It doesn't really care which way you come from. Have you ever seen a European country in trouble with a country from another continent and be condemned by Europeans? You'll never see that. Have you ever seen a Western country turn against another Western country for the benefit of another country from Asia or Africa? You'll never see that. Now, is this the reason why a Ugandan judge should vote something that is not right just because they have to support Africa? Absolutely not. But in this case, we have to ask ourselves many questions. If she can go against even the judge from Israel, then I think we have a problem. Let me know how you feel about this. It's always a great pleasure to read from you. Remember, this is not about me talking to you or expressing anything. It's about us learning together, learning from one another. And you are very bright people. We need to read from you. God bless.